In this video, I'm going over resolving graphics issues in Linux. Now, many people, when they first switch to Linux, encounter graphics-related issues like poor graphics performance, particularly in games, screen tearing, and even just getting a black screen on startup and not getting past that. I'm about to show you some steps you can take to resolve these issues. All right, so now the first thing I do to try and resolve any issue on Linux or any system for that matter after trying a reboot is installing updates. So on Ubuntu, I'm opening up software updater and that's gonna go check for updates. For most Linux distributions, you just go through your package manager application and install updates from there. Oh, it looks like it's got some updates to install. I might as well do that now. Now, you can also try checking your BIOS settings and seeing if there's an option to switch between a hybrid or dedicated graphics. Now, this virtual machine BIOS doesn't have it, but if yours does, try switching it to dedicated graphics as hybrid graphics has been known to cause issues with Linux. Now, another thing you can try doing is switching your display server. Now, depending on your distribution and what display manager it uses, this will be different, but for Ubuntu, which uses GDM as its display manager, you have to click on your user, and then there's this little gear icon on the bottom right corner of the screen. Click that, and that'll allow you to switch between Wayland and x.org. On Ubuntu, by default, this is set to Wayland, so try switching it to x.org, or vice versa. So just click the one that you want and then log in as normal. So now, if you're experiencing performance issues, particularly in games, then you can try switching to proprietary graphics drivers. AMD has great open source drivers, so this will probably be a non-issue for AMD cards, but for NVIDIA users, not so much. So, if you have an NVIDIA card and you're experiencing performance issues, try switching to the proprietary drivers. On Ubuntu, you can go into the software and updates application and then just click on additional drivers and then it'll search for drivers available for your system. Just click the one that you want and click apply changes. If you're on Linux Mint, this will be called driver manager. Now, if your distribution doesn't find the proprietary drivers or your distribution just doesn't have that functionality, then you can download the appropriate driver from either NVIDIA or AMD, depending on what card you have. So now I know this tip doesn't really apply to rolling release distributions, but if you're on something like Ubuntu, then if you're using one of the interim releases, like Ubuntu 23.10, try switching over to the LTS release because those generally have better support and are more stable compared to the interim releases. So that might solve your issues. So now this one is specific to people that have a multi-display setup, and in particular those that have one of those really modern laptops that just use a USB-C port for everything. If you're connecting your monitor to your PC, with a USB-C to USB-C cable, and it's just not working, try switching to something like a USB-C to HDMI cable or a USB-C to DisplayPort cable. Because with USB-C to USB-C, because it's a versatile port that can be used for both charging and display output, among other things, it can confuse Linux as to whether it should be outputting video or receiving power. So by switching over to a more specialized cable, like DisplayPort or HDMI, then you resolve that ambiguity. All right, so now let's delve into fixing screen tearing, which is the stuff of nightmares on Linux. So if you're on KDE, then what you can do is go into Settings, Display and Monitor, Compositor, and then look for the Tearing Prevention vSync option, and try changing it to something like full screen repaints. Now this will use up more processing power, but it might resolve some screen tearing issues 
that you may be experiencing. Now, I'm personally not experiencing screen tearing at the moment, so I'm not gonna bother with this, but another thing you can do is try lowering your display resolution and increasing your refresh rate, if possible, as higher resolutions and also lower refresh rates can mean more screen tearing. Now, if you're on GNOME, then updating your version of GNOME might solve your screen tearing problems. And this actually comes back to installing updates. Now, if you're on Ubuntu, then you can do this by upgrading to a newer release of Ubuntu. Another thing you can do to try to resolve screen tearing that's a little bit more hacky, like you will need the terminal for this, is doing sudo nano slash etc slash x11 slash xorg dot conf dot d slash 20 dash amd dot conf or 20 dash intel dot conf if you're using intel graphics and amd is obviously for amd graphics and then once you run that it'll open up a new text file in your terminal and then you can just copy and paste in this stuff that i'll have in the description now this is for amd graphics so, so then you can just control x to save and quit that just hit y then enter and now i'll show you what it looks like for intel graphics it'll look similar except you use intel graphics and not amd and then same thing control x to save and quit and then you just do a quick reboot to see if it worked so now if your system doesn't boot then what you can do is get into your grub menu by pressing and holding the shift key or pressing the escape key on boot depending on whether your bios is legacy or uefi and then go to advanced options and then boot into recovery mode and then from here you can just drop to a root shell prompt and then do an rm slash etc slash x11 slash xorg dot conf dot d slash 20 amd or intel depending on which one you put in dot conf to remove that bad config file and this actually flows perfectly into in general if your graphics issues are so severe that your system won't even boot into the desktop. The first thing I would try doing is coming down to this DPKG option and repairing broken packages. Yes, let's remount our file system in read write mode. Okay, finished. Press enter. It didn't have anything to do in this case. If that's not the problem, then there's another thing you can do right from your grub menu. And that is it highlight the option for your Linux entry, and then press E to get to the boot parameters, and then come down to here to where it says Linux, and then come all the way to where it says Quiet Splash here, and then after that, just type no mode set, exactly like that, and then press Control X to boot, and see if that resolves the issue. All right, so now if that fixed your problem, and you're at the desktop, great. So now, now, one thing to note here is this actually did not fix your problem. This is only a temporary fix. In order to make this permanent, what we've got to do is go into our terminal and then do sudo nano slash etc slash default slash grub, and then come down here to the grub cmd line Linux default line to where it says quiet splash, and then after that, within the quotation marks, just type no mode set, then control X, Y, enter to write that out, and then do a sudo update dash grub to actually apply that. And there you go, now that should be applied. Now, if you have an NVIDIA card, you can also try, instead of no mode set, putting nouveau.mode set equals zero. I know it's a little difficult to see because of how this is displayed, but what this does is it blacklists the open source Nouveau driver for NVIDIA cards, which has been known to cause problems. Generally, the newer the card, the worse it is. Or you can also try NVIDIA, 
dot mode set equals zero. Or if you have an AND card, you can also do raid eon dot mode set equals zero, and then press control X to boot. And that's it for this video. Be sure to give it a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you next time.